Boy, I, I guess I'm. I, it was his speech that orange pilled me. That means when you orange pill means you woke up to the beauty of uh, Bitcoin. That's it. I mean, in other words, when I was on your show before, Jimmy, I guess I didn't orange pill you. It no. took RFK Jr. to orange pill you. Okay, fine. You, you you pay the price you deserve. That's another phrase we uh, we talk about in Bitcoin. So yeah, now I'm super interested in Bitcoin now, and now I realize. It's it's uh, essential that Bitcoin is essential for democracy and freedom in the 21st century, because what he referred to as these turnkey totalitarian systems and what that so they can just what, if they could control your money like they did to the truckers. They they got you. Now you can't travel. You can't go to work. You can't pay. You can't do anything. You can't buy gas to get in your car. You can't pay your mortgage. You get, they got you. So now they have. They can control you, and so they can stop you from protesting. They can stop you from uh, uh, petitioning your government. They can stop you from doing whatever you are doing. They can. can that's a hundred percent way to control someone. But if you had your money in Bitcoin, they the government can't get at that Bitcoin. That's the whole no. point. No, that's unconfiscatable and uncensorable. And in response to Bitcoin, because the, the banks, Jimmy, are aware that Bitcoin is an existential threat to the banks and their business and the central banks. So what they've done in the last few years is introduce this idea of CBDC, the central bank digital currency, yeah, which they think will compete with Bitcoin. Right. But uh, two no. things. Number one, they're just recreating the same system again. There's nothing right. because it's centralized. Uh, it, do, it doesn't compete with the decentralized Bitcoin, number one. Number two, it brings in a whole other layer of surveillance, as you just described, but it gets more pernicious than ever before. For example, um, the CBDC is the currency that, let's say, you are being paid in a CBDC, and this particular CBDC that appears in your Fed coin account has an expiration date, like a frequent flyer mile. And it'll say you have to spend this thousand dollars in your account by January of 2024 or it expires. And the reason they would do that is to force consumption, because the American economy is essentially a consumer economy and the consumer is essentially highly indebted. Um, so they have to figure out a way to keep the consumer in debt and to keep consumption rolling. And so by having a currency that expires like a frequent flyer mile, they can trap people into an endless cycle more so than they are already. Most people are already in a, a debt cycle and people have no savings. I think the average American has maybe one or two months of savings. You know, if they suddenly lost their income, they maybe have one or two months before they're completely bankrupt. So this is the way the banks like it because they end, you end up going to them to borrow. And the average rate on credit cards has never been higher. It's something like 24%, which is extortionary, which is incredibly high, which is usurious, which is it was illegal in many, it should be, it has been illegal. And But here, you know, just so you get some context, Jimmy, you know, I'm talking to you from El Salvador where I live with Stacy, my wife, and they made Bitcoin legal tender. Um, um, last year and the, the economy has thrived and the president Bukele has embraced Bitcoin. He has been orange pilled by Bitcoin and he has essentially uh, passed on those benefits to the population that is now thriving under a Bitcoin standard. So El Salvador, believe it or not, is leading the world in monetary reform with Bitcoin as legal tender. And this is uh, really spreading all over the region. So Central America is becoming a, a really a, a bastion of liberty and freedom. Uh, President Bukele's policy is, is economic freedom. And uh, this is spreading now to the other five Central American countries. And of course, you see pockets of this all over the world in Africa and Asia and Europe. You see different communities and countries heading toward a Bitcoin standard. But here in El Salvador, they're leading the way. So El Salvador is leading the Bitcoin revolution with President Bukele, who I've had a, the good fortune of meeting several times. And he is a once in a 500 year political genius, I would say. He, he's absolutely on, on, the, on the mark and he's taking El Salvador into the 21st century. And he, his, the model here will be copied around the world. Uh, one of the last countries to get into the Bitcoin as a legal tender will be the United States because it's still, benefiting by having world reserve currency. And there's a lot of benefits that come with that, um, that uh, they don't want to give up but in terms of being, having these oligarchy. America is an oligarchy, Jimmy. Uh, of, yes. Of banks, right? 
I mean, America makes fun of Russia for having oligarchs. I know. But, you know, Russia's got nothing on the America no. oligarchs. Jamie Dimon is an oligarch. And so are the five or six bankers that run the entire system, as are a few of the big pharma, big energy, right? That's an oligarchy, Jimmy. Those are oligarchs. That's right. Capitalism. Don't blame capitalism for for allowing your economy to become an oligarchy. That's right. Uh, we've so we've made uh, that message here on this show. Uh, you're. People point to January 6th of them trying to steal our democracy. And I have to remind people your democracy was stolen from you decades and decades ago, which is why workers haven't had a raise since 1980. And half the country can't afford a $400 emergency and 80% of workers live paycheck to paycheck. Uh, that's be, that's that, that, that doesn't happen in a democracy. So we don't live in a democracy. We live in an oligarchy, which is correctly you point out, and it was proven by the Princeton study. 